Okay. okay. Welcome, everyone. I guess we start sharp. We don't wait as the recording has started. Uh, we use the time we have. So welcome, everyone, to the Software Engineering in Practice track. Uh, my name is Sigrid Elf and I work at Ericsson. I'm also associated with Malabolin University and an adjunct professor at Colton University. And with me, I have Julia Salito, who is also here. You're a PhD student, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. From where? University of? University of Salerno in Italy. And it's yeah. very nice to be here. Yeah. So uh, we have a very interesting track as usual with a lot of, well, not a lot of papers in this track. We have three great papers. And, and of course, it would be great to hear a very short summary. As you know, the program has media attached and the paper attached. So I hope you have had a look at these papers. And we will go through a summary of each paper uh, in turn. And I think because we're only three papers in this session, we have maybe some few more minutes than five minutes. Uh, but I think we should try and focus on discussion of your papers. But uh, you don't need to stress. That's, that's the good part, right? So uh, I will hope that we all unmute ourselves now, except the presenter. And also excuse myself if I pronounce your Chinese names wrong. I'm not a Chinese speaker, che che to all the Chinese, but I'll do my best. Um, and so please state your name again uh, when you start your presentation. So uh, the first paper uh, will be around field-based static taint analysis for industrial microservices. And it's going to be presented by Sheshin Song. And he's a research student from the Technology uh, University of Technology in Sydney in Australia. And he has also been a research intern at the Ant Group. And the paper is written together, I guess, with a lot of people at the Ant Group, uh, Jing Chao Lu, Tio Wu, Peng Di, and Alex Liu, and also the supervisor, Julie Su, from University of Technology, Sydney, I guess. Right? So yeah. with that, I present you, uh, please take over, and we will mute uh, until the next speaker. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Zhe Xing Zhong from the Ant Group and the University of Technology Sydney. This talk, I'm going to share our work on field based steadily tend analyzed for industrial microservice. Tend analyze is the typical technique which has been used to chase the data propagation in the program. Many steadily tend analyzers are proposed such as FlowJoy, Entend, F4F, and Jure Infer. However, when we try to use this analyzer on the industrial microservice application, we okay. find that all these existing tools do not analyze efficiently and because of the following challenge. First, the recovery of most existing analyzers is low because, because of the incomplete program, which is used for inter-procedure analysis. Most stop, existing stop, stop, stop. Most you need to screen. <laughs> You're not sharing your screen. We don't see anything. You can see my screen? No. Okay. So start uh, over again. <laughs> how about share. now? Yeah, now it works. Thank you. Do I need to start again? Do I need to start again from the beginning? Yes. 
Can you start again, please? Okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm Zixin Zhong from the Ant Group and the University of Technology, Sydney. This talk, I'm going to share our work on field-based steady tenant analysis for industrial microservice. Tenant analysis is the typical technique which has been used to chase the data propagation in the program. Many steady tenant analyzers are proposed, such as FlowJoy, Entertent, F4F, and JoyInfer. However, when we try to use this analyzer on the industrial microservice application, we find that all these existing tools cannot analyze efficiently and precisely because of the following challenges. First, the record rate of most existing analyzer is, is low because of the incomplete core graph, which is used for interposition analyze. Most existing steady 10 analyzer run their analyze based on the previous core graph. However, it is hard to obtain the complete core graph statically in the microservice application because of the usage of the complete framework behaviors. Even though we can supplement the core graph by manually modeling these framework behaviors, it is costly to it is costly and time consuming. And it is hard to guarantee all framework behaviors are property mode. If any behaviors is missed, the color color relation were also missing in the generic core graph and the record the recall rate of the tenant analyzed will reduce. Scalability is another obfuscate for steady tenant analyze. Even though it is possible to get a sound and a precise core graph, the authentic core graph will be very huge because of the large scale of the microservice application. It is cost and it is costly to run precise context sensitive interposition analysis on such on such large large-scale core graph. What is, what is worse, the memory usage could be overly huge if the help is abstracted precisely for instances with field-sensitive analyze. Position is another significant concern for steady ten analyze. The analyze result of most existing tools are usually over due to the lack of tenant checking in complete container like map, list, or JSON object. To solve this challenge and make the tenant analyze available for the microservice application, we propose a field-based steady tenant analyze solution. Compared to the field-sensitive analyze, our field-based analyze relies less on the per-built core graph, which could provide better scalability and the recall for checking sensitive data. The field-based analyze doesn't distinguish different instances of the same type, but distinguish fields of the same kind. By merging all usage of the field in the microservice, we are able to perform the interposition analysis without the previous program. For example, in this case, the sensitive field of the class mode is seen as the same everywhere in the program, which will be merged in the field-based analysis. Therefore, why existing analyzer fail to find the data leakage at the inter interceptor when the interception mechanism defined in Spring XML file are no property mode. Our field-based approach could still find the sensitive field that propagate to the lock in the interceptor without any modeling of the interception mechanism. Our experimental result of the analysis on the production benchmark at the end group demonstrate that the field-based analysis could run efficiently on large industrial microservice in minutes level. It is also worth to mentioning that our invest investigation into the industrial application found that each field usually represents a concept that keeps unchanged in all it is usage in the application. Sensitive data is usually propagated among the fields assigned with a specific concept. This phenomenon undermines the position loss of the field-based analysis compared to the field-sensitive analysis. Furthermore, we also improve the position of our tools by modeling the operation of the frequent, frequently used container to support the field-based algorithm to chase sensitive data precisely within container. In conclusion, we have introduced three challenges for steady tenant analysis on large industrial microservice. 
the low recall rate that caused by the unsigned call graph because of the mist of firmware behaviors. The scalability challenge which result in the costly in both memory usage and the time consumption. The, the position challenge that caused by fail to checking sensitive data application among complete container precisely. We have proposed our field-based analyzing approach, which doesn't distinguish different instances of the same type, but distinguish field of the same kind. It relies less on the computer core graph than field-sensitive analyze. In our field-based analyze, we also improved the position of the analyze by modeling the operation of the frequently, frequently used containers. This is all of our talk. Thanks for your attending. Oops, thank you so much, Shenqin, very nice. I think we wait with questions until all of the presentations are done. If you can hang around a little while. Uh, and thank you so much. And then we go on to the next presentation. So the next presentation will be, I hope you're there. <laughs> it will be on a cross-company ethnographic study of software teams for DevOps uh, and microservices organizations, benefits and issues. And it will be presented by Xin Zhu from Nanjing University together with uh, Wang Wang, He Sang, uh, Qing Wang, Dong Zhao, and Chen Xing Zong. I hope I did this right. Otherwise, you have to correct me. <laughs> uh, so it's uh, a study made, I guess, in the state grid Nanjing Power Supply Company, right? So please, Qing, share your screen, and you have five minutes in. And, and the rest of the audience, please uh, post questions uh, meanwhile in the chat or save them for after presentations. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. I share my screen. Could you see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. It's my honor to be here to uh, introduce my research. Uh, the paper of my uh, title is a cross-company uh, ethnographic study on software teams for DevOps and microservice. My name is Xing Zhou from Nanjing University. Emerging from age uh, developer communicates microservice, which is a uh, portmanteau of uh, my uh, mic and service, was considered as architecture solutions for continuous architecture sitting in DevOps. Microservice achieved benefits by uh, composing the uh, memlins into small uh, service that communicate with each other through lightweight machines. But DevOps and microservice have received increasing attention from researchers and practitioners over the past decade. The Google search trends for the two concepts since 2010 with a high degree of consistency. They are commonly adopted and implemented together in many software companies. Our study aims to explore the organization benefits and issues of software teams using DevOps and microservice in industrial contexts. With this objective, the following research questions are formulated to guide this ethnographic study. Researchers in order to understand DevOps and microservice in software teams by uh, investigating the daily reality of individuals or teams in various environments. Also, a number of interviews with uh, practitioners and some observations on the practice were conducted in some relevant empirical studies. They are mostly carried with the researchers' parallel uh, experience, thus ignoring some small but key influence factors in practice, especially from the human and social aspects. This ethnographic study increased the uh, uh, increase the possibility of meeting important moments in the research process through the 
uh, ethical uh, participation of researchers in the software teams, the basic unit of software development to conduct uh, participate or ob uh, observations and interviews. The research project began in January 2020 with a total of seven months of participate observation in the three companies at different sales. They differ in business size, product, customer, and degree of organization. All of the three companies claim the true use DevOps and microservice. Therefore, they offer similar environments in different state, uh, states of cooperation development, which allow compressive information to be observed in the period of this study. In the data synthesis uh, phase, we mainly use the ground zero, one of the methods to build zeros and conduct the reality in software engineering uh, through uh, in interaction with language and communication. I was employed as a data analysis technical in this ethnographic study since it provides a systematic method for uh, generating uh, conceptual zeros from qualitative data source. Although the three companies have different business settings, uh, the organization of the three uh, of, of their software teams could be similar abstract as the three level structure. Uh, which brings changes to technical driven changes and the culture performance. We need more, uh, we need uh, uh, most narrow technical uh, drive organization. The technical driver uh, innovation requires a four level chain of group uh, group team department organization. On the top of two level, uh, technical is often uh, not the top concern and the option to solve this problem. Affected by the stable organizational structure when using DevOps and microservice for software development, so the software team may work as a virtual team. This picture shows the workflow of the uh, typical virtual software teams for company three. Uh, each microservice is maintained by the virtual team com composed of the engineers. Repeat intonation and deployment are the major benefits from the uh, perspective of the organizations, which allows them to create view, view to make quickly. First, DevOps and microservice contribute to these benefits. And ability and skills, uh, this can be recognized as the main uh, uh, benefits for uh, individuals that could help them to consider new job uh, opportunities. It, re it results from requirements that a single team has to uh, capable for almost a full spectrum of uh, responsibility uh, in the interim life cycle of DevOps. Another possible reason is that team turnover is likely to be higher in DevOps. Reduced bonus, these benefits can be. Um, Attribute to microservice. Microservice allow uh, developers to focus on suspect, uh, suspected uh, demand. High cost. This might be the most significant pain brought by both DevOps and microservice. Similar to the problem arising whenever a new technology or method is adopted. Fields more locating issues in microservice uh, also lead to high time cost where uh, data consistency need to be uh, generated while re uh, re resolving the problem. Lack of practice guidelines, this plan is especially significant in microservice uh, oriented uh, decriminalization. Uh, although many approach for microservice dimensions have been proposed, the software team uh, essentially a future of mild in their daily work, uh, where the business changes seems out of their control. First, uh, software organization are keen to improve DevOps pipelines, but may have less interest in their in other uh, essentials that uh, DevOps uh, uh, advocates for the highlight uh, holistic uh, improvement. The complete DevOps pipelines was uh, uh, dehaze into several segments that uh, 
uh, a, a barely contained to each other. The first shams is between uh, planning and coding. Uh, these shams uh, raise uh, questions about whether DevOps is indeed uh, adopted in uh, oxygenation because of the uh, scription of Dev and Hello, we lost you. Hello. Julia? I can hear you. Hear you. The connection is not working. Yeah, I think we had some problem losing our speaker in the midst of interesting. So, Chin, are you there? No, I maybe he will come back. So that was a nice crash. <laughs> so should we continue uh, and say we almost got all of his issue and thank him anyway. Uh, so I think we continue, he can relax. So next presenter, is actually Lan Xin Yang. You're here, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and he is in okay. paper, an industrial experience report on retro in, intro inspection. It's really, so it's a new name for Fagan inspections, I guess. But you're yeah. also yes. from yes. Nanjing in China. So it's nothing happening in Nanjing, I hope. <laughs> you're okay from your from your connection <laughs> so please you're welcome to start yeah. okay can you help me and uh, see my screen yes we can hear you always okay. fine okay let's start uh, hello everyone my name is Nan Xin Yang. i'm very glad to have the opportunity to report on our paper an uh, industry experience report on ritual inspection. Sorry. Let me start by giving some background information of ritual inspection, the enterprise specific practice for software quality assurance. In most cases, although all the code commits merged into project repository subject to review and testing, and even working up, there are still a few residual defects which consume significant time and effort to fix. A few team at this enterprise organized the informal postmortems and other type of simultaneously retrospective style meetings to solve such challenges. This style of practice to some extent conferred its effectiveness in ensuring software quality and therefore reached received officials' attention and appreciation. Having surveyed pilot teams and discussed with QA and audit divisions, this retrospective style practice was officially standardized and institutionalized to be an organization-wide practice. <laughs> you not sure. Ritual inspection is an enterprise-specific practice for software quality assurance, a mean to reinforce the quality of code delivery, especially to improve future coding quality and to, for to foster developers' awareness of quality concerns. When it comes to the protocol of ritual inspection, this practice in general is a variation of classical figure inspection. Also, it shares many similarities with peer code review, but differs in purposes, samples, participants, stages, processes, and activities. For example, for the stages, peer code review is mandatory within divines prior to merging code commits into project repository, whereas ritual inspection is optional and should be conducted by external divisions after testing has been completed. This study is to invest, investigate the experience and lessons learned from ritual inspection to this end. We propose the four research questions. The first research question is related to the benefits. The second is related to the common styles in ritual inspections. The third consults the defect types and the severities in ritual inspections. Finally, we propose 
the fourth research question to understand the lessons learned from ritual inspections. In this study, we collected and analyzed various empirical evidence for data triangulation. To be specific, we performed archive analysis, questionnaire surveys, and panel interviews during the data collection stage, and we performed descriptive analysis, thematic analysis, and narrative analysis during the data analysis stage. Okay, let's move on to the findings of this study. For the first research question, we found that in addition to its major function, code quality assurance, especially for future code quality, ritual inspection can contribute to side benefits, such as internal audit, internal audit division, communication, and additionally, play a role in cultivating prof professionals, such as developers and reviewers. For the third research, for the second research question, we found that comments in ritual inspections clarify defects, elaborate rationale, offer suggestions for assisting correction and improvement, as well as appreciate well-done work. Despite some of them also appear in peer reviews, they are more common in ritual inspections. For the third research question, we found inspectors have identified a wide range of defects in ritual inspections, including but are not limited to logical faults, security vulnerabilities, as well as violation of coding standards and coding experience. Quite a few of them are serious and should be highly concerned, which confers the unique value of ritual inspections. Finally, for the fourth research question, we found that despite of its benefits, ritual inspection also suffers developers' acceptance, inspectors' engagement, and organizers' predicament. Therefore, it has not worked completely as expected. Additionally, accordingly, we proposed four recommendations for improving the future quality of ritual inspections. The first is strict, st stricter admission criteria for the projects to be inspected, and the second is more adequate preparation for both the inspected divisions and the inspe inspectors. Otherwise, ritual inspection becomes a waste, followed by the longer inspection period so that each role can better complete his or her work. And finally, more careful publicity so that each role can benefit from ritual inspections. In a nutshell, this study reports on empirical investigation on ritual inspection as an altered QA practice in an industry context through long-term observation with data triangulation, which offers reference value for other organizations and employees with serious concern on software quality. Okay, that's all. For more details, please refer to the preprint paper or contact me by email. Thanks. Thank you, Lanxing. That was very nice. So I think we now uh, ask all uh, the authors of the three papers to turn on their camera. And uh, I'm sorry, Chin, you, we were lost your connection there. You didn't have time to finish up. And I think we're ready to start our uh, discussion or questions. So my first question is, is there anyone in the audience who have a question? Please uh, unmute yourself and just fire away. Otherwise, I can start uh, while you think on it. So I'll, uh, my first uh, question is really to uh, Chen Jin Song. Uh, so how long time did it take to, to do the modeling uh, part of your, uh, I mean, it's, uh, so uh, if people are gonna replicate your work, I think the one that requires a lot, uh, or maybe that's my first question, which part was the most uh, difficult for you? to do. So are you there, Chen Ching? So please unmute yourself. 
Hello. Sydney, are you there? No. No, he's not. Yes, there you are. <laughs> Do you hear me? Did you hear my question? Yes, yeah, I hear your question. For the modern part, you mean that? Yeah, but overall, we, of, we, for the overall. Overall, what was most time consuming for you and and how much part was how difficult you, would you say the modeling part was that's my question uh, how difficult for the modeling for the uh, yeah. uh, container operation yeah actually we found that actually for the uh, container operation that only use like um Well, Sydney's not with us anymore. <laughs> we have some difficulties across the world. Now he comes back. I think I think there's something wrong with the system. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Try again. Try again to answer because okay. we for the, you. Uh, for the okay. I will continue my answer. For the oper operation, the container operation modeling. It normally use uh, 20 to 30 seconds in our case, because uh, we only model how we model the, the container operation. We would we were first uh, scan all the invoker, the the, yeah. the the invoke the operation invoke. Then we will transfer the invoker, the invoker based our based on our pre study to convert the the, the invoker to the to the submissive IR. No, okay. Then we will use that IR to to like add the data to connect the data with the field, so it will not take a very long time, okay. only just twenty to thirty seconds. So it's not such. I mean, you talk about scale, but it the size is not that huge. It wasn't like millions of things to do, or it was. It's more in the thousands, so you could manage. Do you understand yeah. my? Yeah. yeah okay yeah okay because i thought it looked very good except i i would find it very difficult in my system at ericsson to replicate your work i mean only maybe on small parts so yeah okay thank you thank you so uh we go to uh chin chu are you there uh you got cut off there but you had a such an interesting uh talk around uh, how people changed and the cost of changing and the issues uh, so my question to you could you could you unmute yourself and or do you hear me are you there Jinju? no <laughs> well Say hello when you're back, right? <laughs> if you hear me. So uh, we move over then to Lang Ching. Uh, so I'm very okay. curious about uh, the inspection review. Uh, yes. Because at uh, I'm in my experience, so I worked like uh, 30 years in industry and in the 90s, so I'm an old person. <laughs> But it was really popular to do inspections, right? And yeah. we did a lot of inspection. But this was abandoned because people thought the time or cost to find the defect was too much. It was too much control. So, so I know code reviews are popular, but I saw one of your warnings not to have too big stuff. Do you think it's an effective practice uh, to really do inspections or retro inspections? Uh, yes, uh, of course. Uh, and <laughs> as I as I mentioned in the earlier, um, yeah. even though all the code commits merged into project repository, there are yeah. some defects hard to detect because of yeah. uh, the general uh, code reviewers or code yeah. authors hard to find these. Mm, defects so okay. i think 
I think in um, the um, retrospective, uh, yeah. inspect, re, re, retrospective style inspect, inspection is worth Better. is worth doing. Okay. Um, so so then I follow up with the question: Do you think that uh, if you automate, so people are more anonymous uh, as a code reviewers, do you think that would help? Uh, if you have like an automated uh, inspection and you assign code reviews anonymously to people so they can really sort of <laughs> tell what they want and not get personally, <laughs> uh, you know, do you think that would be a system that would help, uh, that would encourage more defects and more comments? Um, do you understand okay. my question? Mm, pardon, please. <laughs> so if you oh, automate the assignment oh. to persons okay. and they would be anonymous, you know, so it's not a person, the system would assign an inspector, right? Yes. Do you, yeah. do you think that would be helpful to have more defects and more comments because you would get okay. sort of okay, okay okay i get it okay yeah. i get it um and um, okay in the uh, at the at the, this enterprise all the inspectors should be both uh experienced should be um professional yeah especially in um, software code uh, software security yeah so, yeah um um since they are you know, they are being invited in ritual inspections they have more expertise and experience so they have the more chance to detect the defects yeah but if you do it anonymously like you don't name the person do you think that would help like you you don't do it you do it online and you do it you know hidden I, you see what i'm saying that that would encourage more defects and more comments um, i see okay this is also <laughs> the uh, current shortcomings of ritual inspections so uh, yeah. during our collabor collaboration with this and this uh, yeah. enterprise i have um, proposed some recommendations for improving the future quality of ritual in inspections um, so for what you mentioned just just um, I have contact with the executives and the, the in inspectors so um, they do highly appreciate um, the recommendations but uh, yeah. um, to be honest to be honest I didn't mention it in the uh, or in the paper so I okay. guess uh, it is a, a very good um, suggestion yeah okay thank you thank you yeah, thank you so uh chin chu are you there could you unmute yourself yes i'm here yeah good great so sorry, <laughs> sorry the poor communication <laughs> so uh could you you had a very interesting talk about this change maybe you want to to finish up or say some last words because you were cut off, as you know, in the end. But um, my, I actually had a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we can read the paper, but it would be very good if you can explain. So uh, when people have moved to agile teams, right? And they do everything. How do you solve testing like the entire do you have special agile team for that or are they all the testing done in in the small teams because that could be a problem i know from experience uh, working with agile uh, and working with microservices do you have a comment do you understand me hello I'm here. Yeah. Did you understand me? Should I write it down? Okay. Uh, 
So my question was how you handle system testing when you have an agile. Do you have a special agile team for that or does everyone do testing in the small team? No, he's been gone. <laughs> okay, this was difficult. <laughs> yeah, he's back. I'm sorry. Yeah. I dropped again. Yeah. So, are is it okay for you? I can't. Do you I understand? Can't hear you. I can't hear your questions. So, if I write it in the chat. Could you tell me the questions again? So, how do you manage the system testing? Is it a special agile team or does each team do it? So it's in the chat as well. Okay. Do you understand? I know this was maybe not the core of your investigation. First, first above the gas and the pens uh, also report in our parallel studies, uh, which guessed that the DevOps uh, implementations were uh, observed as the three companies uh, yeah. uh, to in some extent was uh, common to others uh, in many uh, in many teams. Okay okay so is there anyone in the audience who have a question please put it in the chat no come on esther angelo andrea janet tim cesar come on japan no no questions Okay, people moved. So this was a tough call. So I have run out of questions. I think I, I, if you don't have any questions and everything is crystal clear for the software in practice, I just have to thank all the authors again. Uh, and uh, you know, it was very nice done, and I think we can conclude this session for now. Okay. <laughs> well done. Good work. <laughs> okay. Bye bye for now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for holding this. Yeah. I would stay here and chat anyway for the last 15 minutes, but you're free to leave. <laughs> I don't know why the system dropped. Now everything works, right? <laughs> typical, typical. Okay. Hope to see all, our, all of us in the next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see you in Melbourne. I'm going to be okay. there in person, so. Now we have all of us here. Finally, it works, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Yeah, I've been in Nanjing, so, and I've been in Sydney, so I know how wonderful it is outside. Okay. How many times <laughs> have you been to Nanjing? Oh, actually only once, so. Only uh, once. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And it was about um, this time, maybe a little earlier. And it was wonderful. Yeah. Okay, welcome to Nanjing. <laughs> yeah. I and Zhu Xin and I are both from the same team. Oh, yeah. The, that was, so yeah, very the, that was, that was plus research laboratory uh, directed yeah. by Jason Zhang. Yeah. 
So you have very good supervisors that made you submit to software okay. in practice. Good work. Uh, okay, thank you. I really congratulate you for succeeding because this is a tough conference. So you did your job well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think it's very interesting for the rest of the world to both know that you're transforming into agile because I felt, uh, for instance, that was a bit late uh, happening in China. So, so I'm I'm happy to see because it brings all modern tools and it brings much more sort of drive in the teams as well. So it's a uh, it's a very good. Uh, okay, by uh, by the way. It's mostly upfront, but then you start to get used to it. It works fine. So. Okay, yeah. we both uh, uh, spend. Uh, much uh, spend much effort on software engineering to um, help improve the quality of uh, software development and the maintenance. Uh, yeah. By the way, I, I'll, I'm going to uh, Switzerland in the coming months about uh, September. So I guess we may have a chance to meet each other. Yeah, but I'm in Sweden, not Switzerland. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Switzerland is nice too, but not sweet. It's the same as Sweden, but uh, they have more yeah, hills. I, I, <laughs> I, I just mentioned it, but uh, I can't distinguish in the two countries. No. It's like Nanjing and Beijing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cha cha. <laughs> Well, I need to take care of my next session, actually. So again, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the conference. There are so many interesting papers and recordings to view. So best to you okay. all. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.